Hi, I'm Kurt. And I'm Justin. And we're from Fast Tracks Motorsports and Union Bay Racing in Puyallup, Washington. The Northwest's only full service ATV, UTV, motocross, and snowmobile shop. You're watching the first of a series of videos we're going to produce to help you install and utilize some of the products that we build. So sit back, grab a beer, and pay attention. Well, thanks for joining us, and today we're going to be covering how to do an install CC on your motor for calculating compression ratio. And the reason we're covering this is we get a lot of phone calls from customers that have bought motors and don't know what kind of fuel requirements that they need to run that motor. So we're going to cover that, and uh, along with some other uh, helpful information, Some of the tools that you're going to need for this process that we'll be showing you today is a piece of plexiglass with a hole drilled in it, a calculator, some kind of a fine incremented uh, CCing device. Um, this here is a barrette. Um, if you can't find one of these, you can also go down to your local veterinary supply and pick up a syringe. A uh, pen and pad for doing our calculations a little later some 90,000 solder for doing a squish test, some grease for sealing the piston to the cylinder wall, some kind of a liquid, uh, prefer preferably colored so it's easier to see, a uh, flashlight or overhead light, a some kind of a level, a pair of side cutters, a pair of calipers, a spark plug, and whatever tools that you need to remove your head and cylinder dome. For the demonstration today I'm going to be using this Union Bay uh, racing billet 1150. Um, we have it out of the sled right now which is our preferred way it's just a whole lot easier to work on. Um, you, this can be done in the sled as long as you can get uh, the cylinder the top cylinder surface level in both directions. Um, so this is where our level comes into play is we just need to get the cylinder level in both directions so that the water comes up and fills the dome properly. Um, the next step in this process is you need to roll the piston up to top dead center which, uh, which is easily done by just placing your finger on the edge of the cylinder wall and letting it hang over onto the piston and then you can rotate the crank back and forth until you feel the piston right at top dead. Um, in some applications you may need to remove the flywheel because of the magnetic pull may, may make it hard to make the piston stop or stay on top dead. Um, if removing the flywheel isn't an option you can also wedge a rag in between the clutch and the side of the motor. So now that we have the, the motor's level, the piston is rolled up to top dead. We're going to take our grease and we're going to take and rub this grease in between the, uh, the edge of the piston and the cylinder wall. Now as you rub this in there, you know, you'll be able to see if there's any little voids that, uh, that may allow water to go down your cylinder wall, which uh, this is what we don't want. We don't want any water leaking down the side of this because that will give us an inaccurate reading. And you obviously don't want uh, water down in the bottom of your crankcase. So we'll just give this a good, a good filling. And usually you can see any little air voids that may cause a leak. So now we'll take a rag. And we're going to try and wipe away as much of this grease as possible so that we don't uh, displace water. We're going to wipe away just enough so we can get a more accurate reading but without uh, opening up that, uh, that gap in between the piston and the cylinder wall. Get all this wiped away. Make sure we have a good. 
good seal. Now you don't need you don't need a head gasket or uh, or O-rings in this case for this process because that little bit of grease around there is going to seal to that dome fairly well. So now we're going to take our dome and in this case here this is a removable dome so what I'll do is I'm just going to set the dome up there and I've got a couple bolts and I'm just going to secure just the dome so I don't have to deal with the head shell. And we'll just we'll just snug them up just enough to keep her sealed down. So now we're going to take our uh, our measuring device and our water. And we're going to fill up our brett or your syringe, whatever uh, whichever tool you're using. I, uh, I usually fill this over a uh, trash can, which you can't see in the lower part of the frame. Now you can see I've got my finger over the hole to keep the water trapped in, in the vial. And we're just right now we're just letting all the air settle up and making sure that there's no air bubbles on the wall of the tube. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crack the bottom open here and get any air that might be trapped in the tip. Okay. Let's see, I need to top it off. Okay. So most of our water is, or most of our air, I should say, has settled out of here. So now I'm just gonna let off my finger and bleed the water down to the zero. Now what, you, what you'll notice is on your water bubble, you'll see a top line and a bottom line. And the bottom of the line is called the meniscus. You want that meniscus right at the zero. Okay, so now that I have that at the zero, I'll keep my finger over the hole to keep from uh, leaking any more water out. And okay, so what we're doing here is we're gonna fill the chamber up with water right up to the bottom of the threads in the spark plug hole. Okay. I've repeated this process twice now and I've gotten 48 cc's both times. Um, in some cases it might need to be, you might need to repeat this process several times. So I've repeated this process twice now and I've gotten 48 cc's uh, both times. Uh, for yourself, this measurement's going to vary depending on uh, your motor size. But uh, I always encourage customers to repeat this process as many times as necessary so that you get the same measurement twice so that we can get a good verification of how much uh, liquid that this cylinder holds. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to grab your pen and paper and your calculator. So now that we have our installed CC number, we're going to run the formula to figure out what our compression ratio is. So we're going to do uh, bore times bore, which is the size of the piston. So in this case, it is a 98 millimeter piston. So we're going to do bore times bore times stroke times pi, which is 3.1416. Then we're going to divide that number by 4,000, which gives us the displacement of one cylinder on your motor, which in this instant com comes to 573.2. Uh, the next number is a 6, so I'm going to round it up. So I'm going to take my 573.3 and I'm going to add my installed uh, CC number, which was 48, and then I'm going to divide it by that installed number, which is 48, which gives me 12.9. So that's 12.9 uh, 12 to 1 compression ratio. 
Okay, so now we're going to cover doing a flat plate CC, which can be used anytime that you're going to do a change to your compression, because now that we have our installed CC, we can do a flat plate and figure out the difference, which we'll call our delta, and then anytime you want to make a change, you can just do a flat plate instead of doing a installed CC every time. So we're going to take our dome, and we're going to take our spark plug, and we're going to thread it into the hole. And then I'm going to pinch it, pinch the spark plug in the vise. And I always like to point the ground strap at me so that air can't get trapped underneath of it. So I'm going to take and pinch it in the vise here. Okay, so now I've got my dome and spark plug pinched in the vise, and I've got it tilted back a little bit with the uh, with the ground strap and the spark plug pointed at me so it won't trap air. And then now I've applied a thin layer of grease, super thin so that it doesn't in, travel inwards when we put the plexiglass on. So now I'm going to take my piece of plexiglass with the hole in it, and I'm going to put the hole on the upside of my tilt, and I'm going to set it on top of the dome here, and just uh, gently push it down, make sure that uh, it's on there good, and I'm going to go back to my barrette. Uh, repeat my process of filling it. Let all the air settle out of it. Make sure I don't have any air bubbles in there. Okay. Get it down to zero. Okay. So I'll just uh, drop the tip right inside the, uh, the hole in the plexiglass and I'll fill it up with water. So as I'm filling this with water I'll make sure that it gets all the way around the edges. Um, if you have a dome that's got a really shallow squish step to it sometimes this can be a little bit of a challenge. I'll fill it right up here right up to the bottom of the hole. And this makes my flat plate number is 58.2. So now that we've uh, so now that we've covered the, uh, the flat plate process, we know that the difference between our install and our flat plate is 10.2. So now anytime that I want to machine a dome or purchase a new dome, I know, how, I know the amount that it takes to subtract from that flat plate to figure out my compression ratio without having to do an install CC every time. The next thing we're going to cover is how to check the squish step on your piston to the cylinder dome. And this little tiny step right here is referred to the squish step. And this is the squish band. So what we'll do is we're going to put the dome back on the motor. snug it up just a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to take my 90,000 solder and I'm going to bend an L in it. And you want this length to be about the right amount to touch the edge of the cylinder wall and then come out the spark plug hole. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll that piston down and I'm going to insert the solder into the hole and put it in there so that you can feel it touch the cylinder wall. And you want to do this in line with the wrist pin and the piston, because if you do it front to back, the piston can rock and will give you a false reading. So you always want to do it in line with the wrist pin. So we'll insert this in, and we can feel it up against the cylinder wall. And I'm just going to roll the motor over, and you'll feel the piston come up and hit and smash the solder. And you can see now, that the, 
that the piston is smashed to solder very thin. And so now we're going to take our calipers. Make sure we got no dirt in there. Make sure they're zeroed out. And I'm going to measure that reading right out at the very tip. And this one is set at about 64 thousandths. Um, if you're working on like a watercraft or a skidoo, you can't measure all the way out at the tip because it's actually thicker and you'll have to come back from that tip just a little bit. But yeah, we're still reading uh, 65 thousandths. So now that we have that reading between our compression ratio and that squish band measurement, these are all things that we can take into consideration when we're setting up a motor for a person's particular riding area. So now that we've established what the compression ratio is and your squish step, this is all helpful information that can be used to determine your particular fuel requirements for your application and riding area. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. We'd be more than happy to help you out. And thanks again for watching.